So today's model that we are going to study is the Tobit model. So Tobit model is used when your dependent variable has some limits. Means it is a continuous data, but it does not go beyond a certain number. For example, we say GPA. So if you estimate a GPA data, so what will happen? Let me draw the diagram here so that it's it's the same case as the model for logit. Suppose uh, let me draw the point. So suppose you have this y axis and this is the x axis. You have call it. You put study hours here and you put GPA here. So GPA is between zero and four. Let me put it here. Zero and four. Okay. So it means that logically that your answer should not be more than four. But if you estimate the OLS model, what it will do is it will estimate a straight line, but it does not have any upper and lower limit. So it will start from zero, it will go beyond. Okay, so it means uh, it, it means it's showing us that after a certain after a certain level of study hours you could get more than 4 CGP, maybe 4.1. So, which is not possible in real life. So you need to estimate a model where the model should know that you cannot estimate more beyond this point. So your data is actually truncated. So why, why value do not go beyond this limit? So in this such cases, we estimate the Tobit model. So, or we go towards a subsample. So let me load the data file. So these are relevant libraries. I selected the data, load it. So in this data file, there are three variables. This is G3 is the performance marks in the final term. G2 is the marks in the midterm or second term. G3 is the marks in the first term. And there are other variables like gender, father job, mother's job, father's education. So this is a relevant data. First of all, I will draw the distribution of G3. Means marks in the final term. So the, these are marks between from out of 20. So I can see that the 50% marks are till 10. So what I wanted to do is first of all, I will calculate the correlations between G1, G2 and G3. So this graph will give us a good diagram to assess the correlations. So you can see it here, that G1 and, let me take a pen. So here, when in this graph, G1 and G2 are positively associated. So it's a positive slope line. And similar, so G1 and G2 are also positively correlated. So there are 85% correlated, and the positive slope line is also showing same thing. Similarly, if I take different color, so G1 and G3 are positively correlated and their correlation value is this much. So it's also telling us that their correlation is this. For G2 and G3, they are very secreted, very nearer to each other. That's why the correlation value is higher. So when the dots are scattered, so this correlation has a positive number means it's a positive slope. Bigger the number means the dots are nearer to the line. Here you can see that if I draw a line, the dots are very near. That's why number is bigger. So the correlation represents two things. First, the magnitude uh, sign, which shows the positive or negative correlation. And the number shows the scatterness of the dots nearer to the line. So th this diagram shows us that first term and second term is are highly correlated. And, and the final term is more like normal curve. Okay, so let's go back. This is a, this is was an activity how to learn how to interpret the correlation graph. So then there is the Tobit model. So Tobit model is VGM, GLM. So VGLM model, I, I already loaded this library. Okay, so G1 is equal to G, G3 is equal to G1 plus G2 and the model is Tobit, but I said that the, it, there should be a limit. So upper 10. So I wanted to actually estimate the determinants of marks of those students who are failing. So I make the, uh, we already know that the data of G3 is 
between 0 and 20 and the passing marks is 10. So I wanted to estimate between 0 and 10. So actually I'm making a smaller data to estimate what happens to the failing students. So it means actually I'm making an upper limit. So the data is, uh, the estimates do not go beyond 10. So when I run this command, Center. So it will estimate this library and when I run summary, it will give me these results. So it is showing us that for the failing students, uh, G2 are significant. So more better marks in uh, second term, more chances that they will increase their marks. So this is the interpretation of this. So G1 is insignificant. Okay. So now we can estimate the y hat value and then we can also estimate the residuals. And then this command is for, it will make a uh, square, it will make a uh, frame where there are uh, two columns and three rows, uh, two rows and three columns. And then it will draw the graphs in it. So. These are the graphs that represent the diagnostics of the model. So let me make it first. So let me zoom it up. As you can see that when you compare uh, the uh, quantiles, so it, it looks normal because it's following a horizontal line. Okay. And uh, for the normal residuals, for Pearson residuals, it's not normal. And uh, and if you plot, uh, relate the G3, G3 with Y hat, so it is telling us that the increase in G3, so they are positively associated. So it should be that G3 is actually, uh, Y hat is a part of G3. And when you relate with residuals of G3, it's not a straight line. So why? Because we found out that the data is uh, has two subgroups, failing and passing. So it's not a straight line. So similarly, Y hat and RP, it should be straight line. So it is hinting us that there was residuals in the model. So we estimated like this. So what we can do is we can also plot the correlation between uh, Y hat and G3. And we can calculate the square to calculate the R square of the model. So it is 82% similar. So 82% variation in the dependent variable, which is G3 is explained by G1 and G2. So this is the way we estimate our Tobit model. Hope it is clear for, to, for you to understand the Tobit model, which is used when uh, you think that the data that you have has a subgroup and you split the data into a smaller subgroup. And rather than you go into Excel file and split the data to make a new data, you just say, in Tobit model to select the smaller sample and with an upper or lower limit. You can also add a lower limit here to see what are the di dimensions or the, the, the behavior in that subgroup.